So I'm, thank you for being here. Nice presentation, Martin. I'm a huge fan of Taxify. Been using them ever since they came around. Um, yeah, I'm feeling like the TransferWise ambassador to Latvia now since my second time here in like a month. So uh, anyway, so I'm here to talk about TransferWise and breaking the banks. Um, clicker, did I, where's it at? Aha, here it is. So what does this mean, breaking the banks? Um, first about myself, um, I'm American. Uh, I've lived in Wyoming, South Dakota, Washington, also known as Seattle, Washington DC, and now I'm somewhere between California and Estonia, mostly living in Estonia. Um, I am a huge fan of startups, Garage 48. Also, I think Martin was actually founder of that. Um, really cool stuff that I moved to Estonia and saw all these startup companies. Uh, I love to sing. I sang in the Estonian Song Festival, and this is me running a really fast marathon. Thank you, Chrissy, for the photo. That was fun. So why me? Why am I here now? Um, well, if I was a founder of TransferWise, I would have been at Davos like a month ago, and speaking with the world leaders and talking about the future and innovation and all that stuff, but no, I'm actually just a normal little revolutionary. Um, this is me at summer days. This is me at, uh, do I have a laser here? Ah, no. Uh, this is me on winter days. Um, and so I was the 7,000th user of TransferWise. I was just starting to work at an Estonian startup, and then there I saw at Arctic 15 this guy named Christo talking about this little revolution he's starting called TransferWise. I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. I'll send myself some hundreds of dollars to the US every single month for the next, well, four years. And so I ended up joining the company two years later because I thought this is just like an amazing service. This is awesome. This is saving me a bunch of money because I've never lived in the world where I had to use a bank to transfer money from euros to US dollars. So now I've been working in AML and compliance, so that's making sure TransferWise is legal and awesome. And also product engineering lead, which means I'm trying to keep the product engineering, you know, the engineering organization on the right track and kind of how my team fits into there and kind of tackling those general problems which comes with fast growth. So, breaking the banks. This slide came from a hackathon we hosted in New York City on Wall Street, I attended, and we were right there in front of the charging bowl in like a WeWork, and it, it was just, it was so cool to get 200 people there and kind of put like the consumer fintech, you know, mentality there in New York City, which is kind of more of a big business kind of place. Um, so actually, I'm not really gonna talk much about breaking the banks, because I don't think that's the goal. Um, really like TransferWise has these really humble roots. Um, so I'm going to talk about how do we get here. So how do we get to this organization that I'm working at, has more than 500 employees and sending like a bunch of money around the world every single day, working in five offices. Well there's the clever idea, came from Christo and Tovit, just like hey let's swap our money from UK and US, I mean UK and Estonia. Um, and they just figured out how to save themselves about five, ten, I don't know, a massive amount of money on their transfers pocket, about 50, 25 pounds per thousand that they sent. So um, this is a great idea. Uh, and they're like, they didn't start this with a, a goal of like a revolution. They just like, hey, we're kind of hacking here, life hacking. Let's get our... Um, expat friends involved and they started their Skype group and they started really swapping money here and there and then we got to the point they're like, okay, let's build a team, let's have a product. Um, so it's really hard to see here, but this is kind of a old school team. Uh, there's some Ukrainians, Bogdan and Sergey. they were the first developers. They just, these guys always are like, hey, we can build anything tomorrow. It'll be hacky, but it'll work. Um, then Kristen Tavit, of course, with her idea. This girl, Ava, who was in Christo's apartment or Tavit's apartment in London and she just came out of UCL and she's like, oh yeah, I'll work on your idea, sounds cool. Uh, and then Trin, who was on maternity leave and she just had nothing better to do than make payments on behalf of TransferWise. So these guys together, they've been with the company five years. Christo and Tavit showing some love to each other. Uh, and then Trin, Eva and Bogdan celebrating five years in the office like last week. Um, Really incredible journey for these guys. And so, so you know, FinTech didn't exist when Christo and Talbot set out to make their company. Um, they didn't even have making a company in mind, I think. They just kind of just 
like one thing then up to another and they're like, hey, we're onto something. And so this is where the kind of finding the product stage where they are playing with different pricing models. There was fixed pricing, there was like different kind of tiers of pricing and then they finally figured out to do the fixed, you know, half a percent UK to Euro up to 2% from Euro to USD, just depending on the route, it's more pricey. So this took like um, two or three years. I was always a customer just because it worked for me. Um, but it really took a lot of time to kind of find their customers. But the whole time they, they had really lived the value of a, one of the values of transferwise, customer over team over ego. And this is kind of like how just customer is everything. And no one's really telling each other what to do. No one's thinking they're better than anyone else. It's like the teams are working for the customer. And eventually everything came together and they discovered kind of this customer evangelism where customers loved our product so much they decided to refer their friends to it. Um, it, it took a long time for us to get at this. It took a marketing manager from the UK, it took Nilon from you know, a VP of growth, and it, it took them a lot of time to figure out that, you know, if they built such a good product and they marketed it in a way as positioning it as like against the banks and like really crazy marketing campaigns, like some crazy stuff they had in London, also stunts like getting naked in front of the <laughs> whatever head bank place in London, um, they figured out that they could get customers to talk about money transfer in the pub, something that was normally boring, uh, and so. This came with this logo change. I joined a month after this, and this was this was like the turning point. Um, I don't know, somewhere about here, um, when they went from only hundreds of customers a month to a thousand, two thousands, to many, many customers a month now, um, and we just keep going. And so I think this was like the absolute most important event that ever happened. Normally, I hate logo changes. Like Uber's new logo sucks. Like what? the hell is that? Um, but I love this flag. This is like, some people are like getting this tattooed in themselves. I think that's kind of strange, but um, it's, it really represents freedom and speed and revolutionary. So, so, so what happened? I mean, there's, there's this kind of perfect timing. It was after 2008. It was after the kind of financial crisis kind of put a little bit of a sour taste for consumers and the banking. And I mean, the only like real fintech company that came before this is PayPal. Um, and it was just their timing was perfect because they just jumped right on the internet and consumers were comfortable putting their credit card numbers online because they could always, you know, send a charge back. Um, so, but, you know, money transfer, you actually have to send your money to a bank account in Estonia and if you're someone, you know, living in Germany and doing that, like, you're just hoping my, your US dollars kind of end up on the other side. And so they just got really lucky with their timing and their product and their team and having the background of Skype through Talvit. Um, and so, you know, the number of revolutionaries, what we call of our employees, it grew. Like winter days 2013, winter days 2014, I'm somewhere here, somewhere. Summer days 2015, that was last year. Uh, this was awesome, so much fun. And then finally, a couple of weeks ago, we're in Baternu and there's you know, people all over the you know, theater. And so, so what happened? Why did these people join this company? Why are we growing? Why you know, these customers? And it was for everything I just said. And so where are we going now? Like, we're like 500 plus people and we're transferring a ton of money, but you know, um, it's kind of like, we're still very, very mission driven. So, you know, a boring thing called money transfer, but we kind of made it exciting because banks have been overcharging for many, many years. They make so much money. It's a huge part of their profits. And so, Chris and David, in their hackiness and Estonianness, they just figured out that they had a product that kind of channeled into that emotional, <laughs> you know, hate against the banks. And, and we don't hate them because, well, they move all the money we move to our customers, since customers still have money in their bank accounts. Um, but we're very mission driven and this is kind of what gets us out of bed and this is what you know drives us to fix bugs at like 7 p.m. whenever they turn up on a Sunday. And, and so this is a really critical part of our company and it's in our culture and this is what we hire for. And it's, it's very difficult to keep this alive. Right? But it's still happening. So besides that, we have these teams of entrepreneurs. So about a month ago, David said like, we're becoming massively parallelly creative. So it's not often a company grows to the size, 
you know, it becomes lots of problems, um, especially with 150 product people, just engineering people running around building stuff. And thankfully, we are teams of entrepreneurs. Basically, the first thing you kind of, in the wiki, what they read is like message from Christo, and it just says like, welcome to the revolution. We're all entrepreneurs here, so let's go. Um, and it's really hard to hire for that as well. <laughs> Most entrepreneurs want to start their own company. Uh, and so I guess I was in this position where just like I had more, you know, passion and love for TransferWise than kind of anything else I could think of. So this is really like what's helping us grow, what's helping us build all these systems and having them work. Um, and there's plenty of opportunities that we haven't even started that relate to, well, our mission. So we may start playing with cards, we may start playing with wallets, um, but it'll be all be in the name of money transfer and giving our customers like really good products and rates. Um, so finally, there's this market, and this is what really drives us. Um, so we've kind of found a way to chip into this massive industry, the banks, um, and their one little segment called international money transfer, which happens to be one of their most profitable. Well, I can't really do the analysis on that. Um, but we just have this huge market to grow. There's something like 5% market share in UK, which is an insane amount of money. Um, but if we make that 10 or 20 or 40%, that would just be just massive. And also US, we're barely a percent. I don't think we're even a percent yet. Uh, Australia launched and there's already a ton of new customers there, but still market share is nothing. Um, and we have a sustainable business model. We like to kind of laugh at the media when they're kind of speculating of the funding and valuation of, you know, like if we're burning money, but you know, I can't, I can't say any details, but we have a sustainable business model. And it's really exciting that we will get to the point where basically the only thing that can stop us is if our customers don't trust us anymore. So this is awesome. And so what does this mean to you? Kind of startup founders, people of Riga, the Baltics, kind of uh, transferizers up there to the north doing something. Um, do we have any customers here? Any users of TransferWise? There should be more of you. <laughs> go to TransferWise, go download the app later. Um, but really, like, what does this story mean? What can we learn to do this? And I think the, the really important thing is focus. So just pick your vertical and go for it. Um, pick like that one little chunk of everything. Like Transwise will never become a bank. Like it's, I don't think banks will exist in some point. Will people will find better places to put their money to hold it? Um, but it's really important to focus as a startup. You're only X number of guys, and you you know you should really do one thing and just one thing. And this comes to customer. That's the next thing you can do is be with your customer, be your customer, go hang out with your customer, think about your customer when you're out and about, um, you know, jump in those taxis, ju just go for it. And so this is, it's really actually easy to build a product when you're, much easier to build it when you're a customer, uh, which is why we have a lot of great products out there. Uh, is product, this is that you are actually building something that solves customers' problems and not the problems you think they have but the problems they do have. And luckily, you know, Chris David had this problem and it was pretty straightforward, like which product to build. And then it was pretty, really rough to scale that and actually find those customers that had that problem. Um, but product is like really important. This is like the heart of our company, even like customer support people are always thinking like, okay, we should fix this in the product. What if our product did this, et cetera. So really huge. And then finally, there's this luck factor. Um, you can have awesome focus, you can have, really great, you know, admiration for your customers and you can have an awesome product, but if the timing isn't right, it's so out of luck. So I can't help you there. Um, and that's about it for me. There's this future finance report that just came out on our blog, our guide. So just Google TransferWise Future Finance. It's kind of a cool report about fintech and what's what has happened in the last five years and what we think will happen in the next five years. So that's it. So onwards. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, as I mentioned previously, we are going to have